Coming off a season where LAFC rewrote the Major League Soccer history books, I caught up with LAFC President Tom Penn, head coach Bob Bradley, and general manager John Farrington to get their thoughts on the season and to look ahead to 2020. Tom Penn, our leader here at LAFC, it was an incredible season, but obviously right at the end of that Seattle game, what the disappointment, it had to be there. How, how did you feel? I still felt really fulfilled for the whole year, and we were just so close to having a 10-day run to host the MLS Cup in our buildings. You don't know how often that opportunity comes, so it felt like it was an opportunity lost. I was really bummed for the guys and for the team, of course, because they poured their hearts out all year and really it felt like we deserved to have the opportunity to win it all at home, uh, but we didn't earn it. You know, we didn't win that match. It was sort of a critical storm of things going against us. We didn't play well. They played really well. So you put all that together, that's the way the ball bounces in this sport, but overall felt really gratified and grateful for the year. I spoke to John and I spoke to Bob uh, about what they had to do to lift up the spirits of the team and that part of the organization. Yeah. This is a company and you oversee all the employees of LAFC. So what was your message after that game to the entire group on how they should have been very proud of what, what just occurred? Well, you got the email. This, the, the subject line on my email was the spirit of LAFC. And that hit me in the moment after the loss, the immediate moments. And it was really the 3252 refusing to go quietly into the night and how they continued to roar. And then they roared louder and then they roared louder. Adrian Hanauer and the Seattle Sounders for winning the Western Conference Championship and to give the trophy to Nicholas Ladero. And I remember in the building just being moved by that. It was so impressive to me, and I was just so proud to be associated with that spirit. And I feel like we need to take that spirit in the organization and, and thrive on that and feed off of that, which we've done, because we just keep rolling. Was there one moment that stood out that, that you'll remember more than others? For sure, the night we won the Supporter Shield. For sure, the moment of raising our first trophy in our house, having it be the Supporter Shield, the whole dynamic that went into that where we co-created the whole run a show for that night. The 3252 leadership insisted we had to have a red carpet roll the seven pitch. Those guys, brought it and presented it to the team and then we celebrated it with the 3252. That was just so poetic and it was this really magnificent night that was shared with them. That night was magical. I've never seen a presentation of any trophy yeah. quite like that. What was the feedback from outside the league? That had to catch some eyeballs. Yeah, some scoffed at it. This notion of the Supporters' Shield is the trophy that the rest of the world understands because that's what they celebrate in all these proper football leagues. And the LAFC way of celebrating should be what other clubs should do going forward. Tom, your motto heading into season number two, and this is more of a PG version, was kick butt and take names. What will the motto be heading into this season? Boom. Fire and I want to see us explode. I want to see it come to its full fruition. I would like to see us go boom. Fire post, back in the nets! Our young kids are all getting better. I mean, our whole roster, we led the league in minutes played by young players. 
All that should continue to pay off and we can still improve so much in all aspects of the club. So I want to see a giant step forward in every metric that we have. One thing you would like to see as this brand emerges, not just through Los Angeles, but in every walk of life, what would you like to see LAFC say five, 10 years from now? A globally recognized football brand. To do that, you need to win locally. So we checked that box with the Supporter Shield. We came up short with MLS Cup. We need to go win MLS Cup. We know that. That's a clearly stated goal. And then to try to go be the first American team ever to win Champions League. That puts you in the region as the best among the best, right? And then there's this notion of representing Los Angeles in the global football landscape. Some of that could be a transaction where we move a player on and sell a player into one of the premier leagues. And then it brings us into the global ecosystem. So you see those things happening in the future. That's our goal. I'll leave it at this because the CONCACAF Champions League is a big deal. Some clubs go into that and they know MLS Cup priority one. We're not going to, for lack of a better word, sabotage our season anyway by putting more eggs in the Champions League basket. LAFC though, I, I spoke to Bob and John, I speak to you now. This is a very high priority. Why? John and Bob aren't either or, they're and guys. They want <laughs> both. That's a great way to put it. So in this case, they want all of it and they think we can build a roster to go after all of it. Let's, we're gonna go after Champions League first, US Open Cup second, Supporters Shield third, MLS Cup fourth in terms of chronology, not priority. But they're all high priority. That'd be a good motto right there. Why not have both? <laughs> More of the all of the above kind of guy. <laughs> Tom, thank you for your time and we look forward to season three. All right, Max, all right. thank you. <laughs>
No. <laughs> there's moments where uh, you're really excited with what you see, but there's always things that you want to see improve. And we still have perspective. We still look around the world and see what happens in the biggest days under the biggest spotlights to do incredible things. And so that just gives us uh, the motivation to keep trying to go in that direction. With that being said, the, the, I, the whole idea of legacy and these historic milestones, does that sometimes make you uneasy? Because I know you want to set that standard, but when those, those other things on the periphery come up, uh, how do you view them? I appreciate the opportunity that uh, is there every day to uh, uh, engage everyone around me when the players are here and make sure that we're all together and trying to become a better team, how much we enjoy the work and, and what goes into it. And, and so I, I take that responsibility seriously and I love every part of that. And, and I figure if that's done right, that uh, over time the rest will take care of itself. Players are expected in the offseason to sharpen their skills, get better. How does the 2019 MLS Coach of the Year sharpen his skills in the offseason? When a season ends, there's time for reflection. And then as you think through things, the ability to share those thoughts with everybody around you. We pride ourselves on the kind of discussions that take place every day, where everybody's opinions count. And when a season ends, we continue. Those discussions give us life again because uh, the, the idea and the possibility to get better never goes away. Do you think you guys have really changed the way it, maybe other clubs match what LAFC is doing? That's so not something I spend time with. I appreciate when people that I respect watch us play or come to our stadium and talk about what's going on and see that good things are happening. And so that's uh, reinforcement. And, and I think everybody appreciates when reinforcement comes from people with experience and people with know-how, then uh, that counts for something. What are you looking forward to most next season here in this off season towards 2020? I look forward to the first day of training, getting back into it and trying to have this slightly renewed picture of what our football can look like and what we can be all about on the field. CONCACAF Champions League is something that means a lot to us. The ability to compete and, and try to win that trophy along with being at our best, trying to play football that our supporters love. No MLS team has won the CONCACAF Champions League in its current format. I'm, I'm sure you know that abundantly clear. What are the things that you think you can bring and this team can bring that possibly could change that? We have to be at our best, and, and this idea that, that we continue to uh, take the exciting moments of football that we can produce and, and balance them with a little bit more experience, a little bit more know-how. I don't think you can be naive and win CONCACAF Champions League. You've got to be confident in your football, but you've got to also know that on certain days, experience, decision-making, uh, that, that little extra bit of savvy all come into play. Growing up, I had a lot of people who doubted me, doubted my ability. But you can use that as motivation. Anthony K from long range, K! John, I sat with you here a year ago, and it was a first round defeat to Real Salt Lake that ended the season. This time you get to the conference finals. It's neither case the end of the season you wanted, but how does this year feel different? I think what was different this year is maybe a bit more disappointment because I thought we were well positioned last year to make a run in the playoffs, and we're certainly disappointed to go out when we did. 
This year, though, I felt like things were set up to host a final, to lose a game at home again. Uh, was certainly disappointing, and I, I definitely thought we were in better position this year. So for it to end how it did, when it did, and has similar tones of a lot to be proud of, but a, a bad ending to a good year, I would say it's the same. That, that feeling is similar. But it was a historically significant season across the board. Uh, when you constructed this team for the first time, did you think this, it was capable of hitting the high notes that it did? I knew that this club would be successful. I think the question would be when. And I would say that the goals of this club were to set ourselves up. We talked about the trajectory of the club to be sustainably successful. I think we've done that. I think the best measure of sustainable success is a supporter shield. And to go and do that the way we did it, the way we played this year, I think the, the answer to the question is, am I surprised this, this club has been successful? No, am I surprised it has happened so quickly? I would think I've been not shocked, but pleasantly surprised as to how things have come together these first two years. The Supporters Shield, you've been around this league a long time, and do you see this team changing the perception of that trophy, which historically did not carry the weight of an MLS Cup? We wanted to give the Supporters Shield its due credit. It's the achievement of months and years in the making, and the group we have, the environment we have, the organization we have, we feel very good about that foundation and it was rewarded with, with the Supporters Shield. Now, do I wish it was rewarded with an MLS Cup? Of course, and when people say, well, what, what more is there for this team given that you set a record in the regular season? The obvious answer is we, need, we want uh, more trophies. And I, but I do think that when I have conversations with football people, even I was in Seattle for the final, people from the Sounders organization would say, well, you guys did the hard part. The way our playoffs are is sort of like the FA Cup in England, where it's a tremendous achievement and, in, and you have to play really well to deserve that cup at the end of the tournament, which is very different from, from the league. Now, our objective and absolute aim is to make sure that we are designed and structured in a way to win both. When you have a club that has set all these historical MLS milestones, how do you prepare an offseason to get a team to be even better? We'll have a bit of turnover similar to what we had last year in our job and you know we've been working day and night since that final whistle in terms of what are the pieces we need to add, what contingency plans need to be in place, how we can better strengthen our group as we now go into a year where we're adding another competition which is very important to the club uh, in, with, with Champions League coming and those are our first competitive games so we have made it absolutely imperative that we keep the core together which we've managed to do now how do we add to that in ways that either strengthens competition and training or adds a, a starting piece those are all the decisions we're evaluating now conquer cap champions league you mentioned it a chance to do something that no MLS team has done it and win it in its current format so what are your expectations how do you approach this as it starts earlier than the mls season from a soccer ops perspective if you go back these previous two years, we've managed to start seasons well, so that bodes well as we start even sooner. We're eager to see what the draw comes out with in, on December 9th, and it's just a really exciting opportunity for us as a club in our third year to have achieved Champions League qualification, which was a, a big target of ours, uh, and really excited to see what our group can show our whole region now, having done so in MLF.